Good morning once again, and welcome back to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. We are, as we still continue to record these uh, uh, Sunday School lessons for, for online viewing, and, uh, and uh, pray that uh, they be viewed this Sunday, and if not, in the future. Uh, very, very neat how we are able now to do these things um, and utilize uh, 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 recordings as we've been doing uh, since we were hit with the pandemic. Uh, back a few years ago and, and changed a lot of things. And uh, one of the things that we took out of that is that we can do these recordings to go back and look at. And I, I certainly uh, am very grateful. So uh, we have a new lesson this morning in our series of the, of the I Am's of Jesus. <clears throat> um, there were seven I Am's, uh, emphatic statements Jesus made about himself. Uh, as we recall, uh, uh, of, of the purpose of, uh, as a matter of fact, I want to just kind of go there unrehearsed as the Spirit leads this morning. Um, and um, in John uh, chapter 20, um, in verse 30 and 31, reading this because this is the purpose of everything <laughs> and, and certainly the purpose of John's great gospel. And the purpose, listen, as we speak this morning, the purpose of Jesus' as I am's. Listen to these these are incredible verses. And it's interesting that it's near the end of the gospel, but it's, uh, it's basically the purpose of, of, of the gospel of John in John's words. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in the book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. <laughs> that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. And I'm telling you, every one of these I am's have been pointing directly to that verse. He was who he said he was. He was Christ. Uh, and believing in him and knowing him. And last week we, we mentioned not only that I know him, but he knows me, knows me as his child. Uh, uh, I have life in his name, eternal life. That's what this lesson's about today, uh, is about life. Um, so let's go to Lord in prayer. Uh, we're in John chapter 11, um, and uh, we're going to look at maybe like kind of go over the first, uh, this sounds going to sound huge, the first uh, 27 verses, 26 verses, uh, 1 through 26. We're not going to read them all, but we'll, uh, we'll uh, look over this great story, this great miracle uh, and what Jesus was teaching us here uh, with this emphatic uh, uh, fifth uh, I am. Lord God, we just thank you this morning. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the, your, your, your Elomet. You're, you are the God of truth, and your word is true. And Lord, I've been trying to witness to, to my mother-in-law, Lord, and just keep thinking about what uh, how we were uh, been taught it. Through the leading of Pastor Tim, that Lord, uh, that we, we if we if we love people, we tell them the truth. Um, and so, uh, uh, and you tell us the truth. That's that's why you love us. And so, it's it's, it's a true statement, Lord. It's uh, and so, uh, God, we're not gonna, uh, you know, or you certainly don't lie, but we're not gonna tell a lie to somebody, uh, Lord. We, we love them, and we're gonna give them the truth. So today is your word, and it is the truth. And I just pray that you would just help me to, as sinful as I am, Lord, to uh, speak through me, unworthy, God. And I tell you, I don't know how you, I don't know how you do it, Lord, but you do. Um, can work through such a such a person, but God, thank you, and I pray today that you be glorified um, uh, in the in the teaching of this lesson because it is a glorious, glorious story of the Bible, maybe the greatest um, of all things that that happened, <clears throat> the miracles, and we lift up your name in it and pray uh, that ever how you teach it, you teach it, uh, Lord. I be willing uh, to to be guided by your Spirit. We give you thanks, Lord, uh, for the Word, and we give you thanks uh, that it's true. We give you. Thanks that not only uh, will it happen, it must happen because you said it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we, we just mentioned um, this is the, I don't know how many lessons. We, we've been doing like two lessons per IM, and we stayed in the, the, in the subject of the, the shepherd, uh, the good shepherd Jesus, and, and the gate of the sheep. We stayed there for a month, four weeks, and it was great. And uh, it, very similar to today uh, in John chapter 11 where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. That's, that's the beginning of it, but but that's that's the, the gist of it right there. And that is huge. Man, that is that's that may be as as great an I am as there is. 
Um, it, it is, it, it is, it, it is, I like to say loaded. It is for a teacher. It is, you've got plenty to work with here. Um, <clears throat> but I was going to, what I was about to say was, is we remember back in John chapter 10 and the, and the, and the shepherd and the sheep was set up by a miracle prior. It was the healing memory in John chapter nine. We've been talking about this every day, every week for the last month. Set up by a miracle, the blind man that was uh, the blind from birth, you know, and it all started with the question, who sinned, his mother or his daddy or, uh, you know, why is he blind? And Jesus said, it's not, it's for the, for the glory of God. It's a, almost identical type situation that Jesus is divinely setting up here with the, with, and really the story is the raising of Lazarus, okay? That's, if you, if you wonder, in chapter 11. So there was a miracle uh, prior to the, the Good Shepherd. Uh, passage uh, that set up his I am. Well, it's interesting today. He's going to be setting up. He's going to be setting up. And that's what God does. He sets up divine events in people's lives. Um, he, he's going to kind of set this up, but but he he's going to give the I am before the miracle. Whereas in the shepherd, he, he, he let things play out. Remember the Pharisees kicked the man out. They didn't accept the miracle. Really just rejected God. And so... So then Jesus started using the, 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 the parable of, of, of what a shepherd does. He loves the sheep, and he, he you know, the sheep know him. And, and uh, because the Jewish uh, religious leaders that kicked the man out of the synagogue, they were terrible shepherds. So just you, just trying to show you how God, and it's just amazing to me how Jesus teaches. I'm, I'm telling you, when we went through the parable, I just I, every week I was just blown away. Yeah, you read these parables over and over and over, but they are so wise. No one is, even the Bible says over and over, they, when they heard Jesus speak, no one ever spoke like him. And, it's, and certainly we believe that today. And if you're a teacher or, a, or, a, or a, an avid reader of God's word, you certainly know this is true. So, it, it, so there's, there's, there's a miracle coming, a, a huge one. And the miracle really is at the end of the passage. Uh, and it wasn't quite as, as it was in the past month, uh, but this raising of Lazarus, four days dead, uh, passed away, and um, even after the funeral, this is, this takes place. Uh, just like it would be like, you know, having a burial today and then going back out to the cemetery the next day or something along that lines. That, that's that's where this miracle that Jesus took it to. Um, uh, before he he uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, and the subject is resurrection. Now, what I did not know, what I did not know, <clears throat> until later in the week when I began to to put things together, God gave me just tons of notes, and uh, I thought this was going to be like a one lesson. I said, "Well, probably the Lord looks like we're going to do one lesson," but I, I I had no idea where the direction was going to go this to uh, today as we uh, make this recording for Sunday. That uh, that it would be about death first, because, and we're gonna say this again, but for there to be a resurrection, there has to be a death, uh, uh, because that's, that's really is the definition of resurrection is to return to life. Well, to return to life, you have to come from death to life. I mean, that's isn't that that's 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 profound. Uh, uh, when Jesus came, he he made much of that. He made much of that as he does this morning. Now, time frame, chronology, as we look, look through this as we progress through, uh, we've just mentioned this is the fifth of, of, uh, of seven I am's that Jesus will make. Um, next, uh, well, next, we're going to do another. We're going to continue on uh, giving you uh, downstream uh, a second lesson on the resurrection and the life. Today's death, like I said, just mentioned. Um, we'll get to uh, John fourteen six, uh, which is uh, the sixth. Um, I am I am the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> so I can't wait to get there. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. If not my, it's my John three sixteen uh, of the Bible there in uh, uh, that that six. So just kind of looking down when. Now we just mentioned there can't be a resurrection without a death. Let's keep in mind what's going on here back to chronologically speaking in this time frame, that Jesus was very, very near in the time frame of, of his setting of his time uh, uh, that he was going to the cross. In other words, it was it was literally, I, I don't know, weeks maybe? I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't do studying. I just know in, when you're going through John in like chapter 12, uh, he's he's already at the uh, coming in uh, for the Passover, the week of the Passover, the triumphal entry. 
So that's how close it is to his own death, burial, and resurrection. It's very interesting here in, in how God put put it all together prior that Lazarus was raised literally, you know, uh, very, very close in time to, to Jesus' own resurrection. Um, uh, and that last Passover that he would uh, observe on earth. So um, <clears throat> let's talk about test of faith this morning. We, we are going to go uh, to John chapter 11. We'll, we'll kind of go over this to the very first, and we're going to read this in just a second here. Um, is, is we, but let's talk about test of faith. Um, because really, this is what it is. This whole I am is set up on, on a testing. Pastor Tim said Wednesday night, Oh man, you need to go listen to Wednesday night, um, um, uh, prayer meeting. Uh, wonderful We're studying Daniel and, uh, you know, Daniel right off the bat in, in chapter one, verse eight. Uh, he was, he was put in a bad spot, you know, young man to, and got, you know, you can say what you want to about him. Uh, um, I mean, not say what you want to, but looking back on it, he was he was taken, kidnapped out of his own country, and taken, and he never, as Pastor Tim reminded us, he never came home. He he stayed in a in a foreign land, but he had his mind made up. Chapter one, verse eight. And Daniel had his mind. Young man, uh, he he kept the faith, and he did, and God blessed him. And but he said this, uh, Pastor Tim did, and we've heard this before. He said that uh, that our all of our lives, in a sense. And this could even apply really to a lost person because God, I think God is going to put, well, we know that we're studying Romans and we know that nobody has an excuse to, to deny God that he exists, okay? But that our lives, especially as believers in Christ uh, through Jesus, um, is really just a series of tests. And, and you know, it's, it, it takes a, a person maybe to, to live out some years to look back and really see that, yeah, it, is, it really is a, bunch, it is a bunch of tests. Um, you know, and they're from God. They're all they're all set up. Nothing nothing happens outside of His providence or His His sovereignty. It's all uh, it's all allowed, good or bad. Um, and but they're tests. They're tests of faith. And, and and He went on to say, because when 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 Daniel, uh, Shadrach, and uh, Meshach or Abednego were were thrown into fire, his his point was is that you really don't know how strong your faith is what your faith is until it is really tested. I mean, you can say you have faith, but until it's tested, you really don't know. I mean, you do. You, you say, and, and, we're, and we're, gonna, we're, we're thinking about Martha here. We're thinking about Martha as we approach that, this study, this morning. Um, and so this test that Jesus divinely sets up here, um, and, and two things came out of it, the, the great I am statement and, and the great raising of Lazarus from the dead, it's all set up here in chapter 11, and it, in the story of, of Lazarus goes down through verse 44. Um, but, but there was a purpose in it uh, uh, of raising Lazarus when he did, and, and this purpose was for us today, but, but also for, for Martha and, her, and, and Mary, the, the sisters, and the, and the passing away. And that is a real sensitive subject. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, uh, the subject of death. And we know that Mary was very, very distraught uh, when and Jesus came out to tell her, uh, and we'll, we'll, we're going to look at this a little bit closer too, that I, when he told her that I am the resurrection and the life. And, uh, and, and we just mentioned about resurrections. Resurrections that cannot happen. There's no such thing as a resurrection without a first being a death. So I want to read the first six verses right here. We're going to kind of pluck some verses out right here. Um, and to, to lead up into where, kind of where we're at today. And, and, and listen to the test. Listen to, to Jesus as he, as he sets up. Isn't it so beautiful to read Scripture and, and look at what God, it's almost like what God was thinking when he was doing this. And, and, uh, and we, may, it, we may have something in our life and we might not really see it that way, but it's funny when you let time go by a little ways and you, you start praying and thinking about it, you go, yeah, God, that's what God was doing. But we can just read it right out of the Word right here. And, uh, and it's so exciting. I love the Gospel of John. I've said this over and over and over. So let's get going here. Uh, John <clears throat> chapter 11, the first six verses. Pay close attention. Now, the first two is just some information about who we're talking about. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus. This is his name, of Bethany, uh, uh, the village of Mary, uh, and, and, and her sister Martha. So that's the family. It's just the brother and the two sisters here. Um, just a statement of fact John makes. And it was the Mary, just to, there were so many Marys in the Bible, there were so many Jesus in the Bible, but this Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with ointment. Now that's to come, that's in chapter 12. Okay, it's interesting here. Um, John wrote this as a very, very old man. 
uh, way after, way, way after. He was, it was 80, 85 or something along in there. This is the Mary anointed the Lord with the ointment. <clears throat> Actually, this was his, considered his, kind of his pre-embalmment for his uh, crucifixion when they buried him. <clears throat> that whole uh, nard, bottle of nard, remember it was a, it was a, it was a year's wages worth and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now listen to this. So the sisters sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. They're talking about Lazarus. But when Jesus heard this, now this is, listen to the test he's setting up. He said, this sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God. Same thing he said about the blind man, more blind so that the Son of God may be glorified by. That is the, man, that is the verse that, that we are all live by. Am I living my life to the glory of God? Because that's what it's always. Not the, that's the only thing that will ever matter, in fact, that you'll take from this planet into heaven is how did I glorify him? Now listen to five. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, and don't think this caught Jesus off guard. He he knew everything. So that when he heard that he was sick, then he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. <laughs> Setting this up, okay? I want to just talk about two things real quick in these first six verses that kind of jumped out at me as we read that about test. Life is full of tests. And what we what we can kind of glean from this right here, uh, two, two purposes of probably many, many, uh, first of all, that our tests are given with God's intent for us, the opportunity to glorify Him. You know, if I pass the test, that's glory to God. Because uh, some tests are super, almost, I, I like to say supernatural, and that's God. That's a God word. I mean, I'm not talking about any person that does something supernatural. This is, that's, just, that's a God word, like awesome. Awesome ought to be just for God, you know. A Sunday school teacher told me that one time. She never, she says, I don't ever say awesome unless it concerns God. That's a good, good attitude to have, a good truth to have. So it's for His glory, okay? Test, and this one is too. Um, and the others, He tests us because He loves us, and He wants us to to gain from it and to learn. And if we fail, He might give the test again. You know, you might get a second chance, but but He does it because He loves us and He wants us to grow by it. So two things we take from that: God's glory. Um, and, and that he loves us. And that's, and that's exactly what is written right here as John wrote this. Now, I want to I wanna just look at this just a minute um, about viewing death because that's, that's what is happening here. This, and in fact, they, they, most Bible scholars believe that by the time the messenger came um, and Jesus said, um, and Jesus knew this, but I, we don't have it in the scripture, but uh, that when they came and in, in, uh, in, in and said that uh, Lazarus is sick, that by, probably by the time that Jesus had received this, that Lazarus was most likely already dead. It took a, while, a ways for, for them to leave, and a, I don't know how far away he was, but he was a good ways away uh, before they, when they got to him, that most likely Lazarus was already dead. And in fact, we'll, we'll see that. We'll see that our friend Lazarus was falling asleep in verse 11. Um, uh, but um, let's, uh, let's think about this subject of death a minute. Uh, and this is where kind of God started just taking me off. Uh, again, there has to be a death before there's a resurrection. Um, uh, and so let's just look here at that verse 11. Uh, let's look at 11 through 15. <clears throat> this he said, and after that he said, said to them, he, 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 uh, he talked about stumbling in the dark and the light, like he always, he's, he used that a lot. Our friend Lazarus is falling asleep. There it is right there. I don't know what much time... He stayed there two days, and I, I, would, I would assume it's probably along about the, 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 the second day because he's about ready to leave. This is the statements of where they're just they're about to go you know, see Lazarus. So I'm assuming these two days from the messenger to now. But, but, but he makes this statement to, to the, his disciples. He said, our, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. And he's telling them that. They didn't get it. The disciples said to them, Lord, this is kind of funny, really. If he's falling asleep, well, he will recover, meaning they thought he just took a nap, you know. Um, it's funny how they were walking with him every day, and they, they just missed such things that were so so plain. I know we got it in Scripture, and we've studied it for years and years. We can't really put them on the spot. Uh, uh, 
<clears throat> we can put ourselves on the spot the same way sometimes, I think. Uh, so, so in verse 13, Jesus said, now, now Jesus had spoken of his death. John explains that. I love the way John just explains what Jesus is thinking and how they misinterpret it. He, he really just, he just makes it so plain and simple. It's really an easy, very deep theological book of John, but it's, it really is easy to, to understand. It's not, it's not, it isn't, it isn't hard. We make it hard, but it's not hard. Um, so now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought he, that he was speaking of literal sleep, uh, explaining what they said in 12. So here's 14 and, and 15. <clears throat> so Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, okay? And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. That's interesting, isn't it? That's interesting. Remember what he said in four, it's for God's glory, so that you may believe, but let us go to him, Okay. So let's just look at that just a minute about viewing death, um, subject of death. You know, death is all in the Bible, and and it's and God has always been open uh, and straightforward about it. I mean, right off, you know, right off. Uh, first of all, we will say this. I'm going to talk about something in just a minute um, that that man creation in the beginning, as it was created, pure and and and, and righteous in the Garden of Eden, was never meant to die. It was never. Not saying that God didn't know it, but it was never the intent for man to ever die. But sin caused that. Okay, it had been no sin in the garden. Well, it would be what we would have when we go into His presence. Uh, uh, it would be perfect, just as perfect as it is in heaven as it would have been in the Garden of Eden. But it didn't. Okay, and we messed up and we lost it. So, so death was was immediate. In fact, you don't get. You know, the first event, really. I mean, we we have the we have the the curse and the sin and the things that went there. But as far as like Adam and Eve going and doing things and looking at events in the Bible, there's not a lot of events of man. It's all about God. But the, you know, really, the first event, if you want to think about it, you, you may, this may be this may be challenged, but but it's close. The first like event in the Bible is 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 a murder, <laughs> is is a death. I mean, you get right there in in chapter three, and and there you have you know. Uh, Cain murdering Abel, uh, really the first. So there's a death almost, I don't want to say immediately in time, but as soon as sin hit, look at that. There, there's a death. So, And we know that all through the Bible in Israel that death, that that, uh, that sin required death. You know, it did. All the sacrifices, we think about that. And uh, so death has been open. Um, and I think in, in people's minds, I, I believe in all people's minds, that thought of, of what happens when I die. Uh, and we're going to talk about fear here in just a second um, about death. Um, you know, where am I going? You know, just you know, I forgot. There's like four basic questions of man, um, and I, I don't have them written down, and it's not rehearsed, so I don't. I don't. One of them was, "What's my purpose?" You know, and God's got every answer, and they're they're plain in Scripture. Um, you know, one is uh, I can't even remember, but, but but one of them is what is what what happens to me after I die. Eternal, you know, and it says over in Ecclesiastes that God's put eternity in the thought of man, and we are, people are always thinking about what happens. Uh, and there's so many non-biblical thoughts and fallacies and whatever fantasies of what happens to to, uh, to a person that passes away. And you know, I think the biggest lie is, uh, it, or, or that Satan puts out there, is that you just go away, and uh, when you die, that's it, and there is no more of you. But that is totally wrong. We know that the that the uh, the soul lives on, uh, you know, and um, and so uh, all of the, the you know what I got we got a, we got a card the other day from a I got, it was a sympathy card for passing of, of uh, one of my parents that uh, I want to share with you in just a minute and uh, it was from a funeral home that had had some sort of little statement on the card about uh, having an angel in heaven like passing away you got an angel in heaven that's what it said. You know, where did that come from? Where, where, where did where did that fallacy fantasy come from that that when you die you become an angel? That ain't it's not biblical, folks. I mean that is a, it might be a, a comforting thought to think of, but I'm gonna tell you what as, as human beings we 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 got a way better benefit than an angel. Uh, there's not a, there's not an angel that'll ever be redeemed and and no salvation. Um, uh, but what I'm just saying is just there's such such mixed things about. Eternity and and where where do you go and uh, and one thing about our relationship with Jesus Christ is we know and and that's kind of what I want to want to talk about just a minute um, 
Because remember, we're talking about the resurrection and the life. We're going to get there next week. Let's just talk about the, the, the facts of life here. That, um, you know, a lot of people uh, you, you can talk to, and not, probably probably going to be non-Christian, or um, uh, they don't even want to talk about death. You say, where are you, where are you going? Oh, I, I just don't even want to talk about it. But, but, it, but it's evident. It's just like, what, 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 what's the old saying? There's two things that are, that are going to happen. Uh, that'll that always is, and they say, you know, the old saying, "Death and taxes." Right? You know, you're gonna die if you're not raptured. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, uh, and your taxes, you definitely are gonna be paying taxes as long as you're living in a, a civilized uh, <coughs> uh, nation. So, fear. And I wrote down something here: physical death. And this is kind of divides. He said the cross is the great divider, but it also divides thoughts also in what you believe. Physical death can, and I'll, we use this term sometimes, holding hands, like faith um, and, and obedience, hold hand. If I believe it, I'm going to obey it. In other words, they, they're connected together. Mercy and grace are connected together. You really can't have one without the other. So listen to this. Death can hold hands with fear or death can hold hands with hope. With wherever how you view death. Remember, this is viewing death. Uh, and... Uh, uh, sometimes it's called the agony of death. It's the agony of, and, and it, there is an agony in the passing, in in the process of death. But we're talking about, we're talking about beyond that. Okay, we're talking eternity. Um, so it can be uh, look viewed upon with fear. Uh, that's and a lot of that's just not knowing it. It's just not knowing God's word, or, or with hope. And hope is what Jesus has given us right here. I'm telling you, he is, he is about to give us the greatest hope ever. Um, so. We look at what Jesus says here that Lazarus is dead, and I'm going, and I and he said, I am glad for my sake that I was not there because there was glory ahead. Um, and and really, there he's beginning to to tell his disciples, even though they didn't know it yet, of what was about to happen, in a sense um, that he is this death is not, this sickness is not of death, uh, and uh, so that God may be glorified. Um, I, I want to talk about the, the Apostle Paul in just a minute. You know, he had that very special vision. Because he talked a lot about um, the resurrection, uh, and um, and he had a very special view into heaven. Remember that, <coughs> excuse me, over in Second uh, Corinthians twelve, the vision he had, uh, in which he said he saw things that that he, that were unspeakable. And basically, God told him not. Matter, he, as a matter of fact, even given him a thorn in the flesh that he wouldn't be prideful about it. Very very interesting there. But I believe Paul. I do know this and that he saw things that no matter he ever saw. John went into heaven. Very special people chosen by God to see things. Very, they were very faithful, and they were they were uh, they were apostles, um, and they were you know they they but but probably Paul saw things that that uh, and he had he had firsthand personal eyes on information that he saw that he wrote because he wrote about things almost like Jesus and John. John wrote Jesus, which is all about Jesus, the revelation, uh, and likewise, Paul wrote a lot about. Uh, let's go to let's go to First Thessalonians just a minute. Um, I think I have that mark, and that's that chapter on the on the on the rapture. But I want to read this to you. Uh, this, I know we have not even talked about really the resurrection Jesus is talking about, but uh, in First Thessalonians four, chapter four, and it begins in thirteen, and this is really those who died in Christ. Remember, we're talking about death here, and uh, and and we see this. I want let's read these. Let's read thirteen fourteen. And Paul, he's he's comforting. He's he's comforting a misbelief about death, because a lot of people got a lot of a lot of fallacies and, and messed up about death. But Paul, this is foundational scripture for that. Uh, God always has a cure for for the sickness of the mind and in in the in the heart. And here it is. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren. There's a lot of uninformed Christians. If you don't read the Word, you're not paying attention. When you're sitting in a class, you can be uninformed. About those who are asleep. Well, what did Jesus say? He's got fell asleep. They said, uh, he'll wake up. He's just taking a nap. No, Jesus said he's dead. That's what this means here. So that you will not grieve as do the rest, that is the unbelievers who have no hope. That's why people fear death. I, that's, I, I believe that. Now listen to 14. This is the comfort. Those don't have any hope that, that don't know him, okay, that have, that have died. But if we believe that Jesus died, and this is the I am statement in 25 and 26, if we believe that Jesus died and rose, you got to, both of them, you got to believe in the resurrection, 
Even so, God will bring with him Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. God will, he'll, he'll, he will raise up. And I don't know how many times Jesus said I, he, that we'll be raised up. And how many times? I started counting how many times Jesus, and I think this might be used next week, but how, and I've always wondered this. How many times did Jesus speak about eternal life, that he's the source of it, that he will raise up? And I got, I, I got up to about two dozen, and that was just going online and just looking through uh, scripture after scripture after scripture, a list, and, and, and but I'm telling you, uh, Jesus spoke much of it, uh, just probably as much as anything I would say, uh, uh, is on, on one subject was was resurrection and believing in that. Um, so he wrote about Jesus's resurrection, of course, and we 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 remember that from the First Corinthians 15, and that's where a lot of our uh, Easter. Matter of fact, in a month we're going to have our Easter uh, sermon. Our resur—I like to call it Resurrection Day. That's just what it is. Um, the resurrection, the third day, uh, in First Corinthians 15. Um, and, and, and matter of fact, we most likely, if God didn't change plans, we'll, we'll be there uh, in about a month. And then about our hours is right here. This is really the rapture. This is people that are died that are going to be raised up in the end. Okay. I worked with a guy one time back in my, I'm going to call it my pagan days. I, I knew the Lord. And by the way, I got then asked to give my testimony um, next uh, Sunday night. And uh, um, and I was just reflecting on my past. And that's what kind of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, uh, the, the the then and now of, of myself, uh, God's way he did it. Uh, I had it. I did it my way. It didn't work out. And I kind of started doing it his way and things began to make sense. Uh, making more sense every day, but I, I don't work with a man that I'm just saying he, he was a Jewish man, and uh, he worked at our little surveying company that I thought what was a pretty big survey company that I worked at. It was blessed to, to have a, a, a boss up there that looked after me and paid for my school and helped me get my license, and he was really good to me. But there was a guy named Lee, uh, first name was Lee, and he was a Jewish man. But uh, we got on the subject of of of, uh, of life after death, and uh, and here's what he said about Jesus. He said Jesus is and he said it positively. And I think the man believed. I really do. I don't remember. I was, like I said, wasn't, wasn't very spiritually walking walking like I should. But he said this. He says, Jesus is just perpetual hope. And he didn't say it like in a hopeless way. And that is exactly right. I get that. I've been th it's weird. That all the things I heard back in the days, in, in that day and time, in the mid-80s or late 80s, that I would remember, Jesus is perpetual hope. He's the, he's the forever hope that we have. And that really is true, and I, I really like that. Um, and I, I'm thankful that, that I could God let me recall that in a time when I really wasn't very living very, very godly. Um, so viewing death, how do you view death? Uh, do you view it through, through fear, or do you view it through hope with Jesus? Now, let's look at Martha's test. Let's go back to John 11, and, uh, and let's look at this again. Or look at it for the first time. Let's pick up in verse 20. Um, but they've been notified. Jesus waits two days. Uh, he tells the disciples on about that second day or whenever it was, it was time to go. We're going, we're going to see uh, our friend who's fallen asleep, who has died. Made that clear. And so Jesus is, is approaching. He has not reached the house yet, uh, a house of mourning, and, and, uh, and it, 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 was, it was not good, uh, uh, at least uh, through their eyes. And, and, uh, but let's pick up in verse uh, um, let's pick up there in, uh, in 19. And many of the Jews uh, had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Okay, Verse 20 is really where I was going to start. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. I, I mean, he just points, says, tells her right there, he will rise again. And listen to what Mary and Martha, and Martha was right on this. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. That's exactly what 1 Thessalonians 4 was. That, that wasn't that wasn't resurrection on earth. That was, that was when the dead in Christ rise. She knew that. <laughs> Verse 25, Jesus said this, and this is it. Listen to these two verses. Man, you can just, you want a nail to hang your spiritual hat on. Here it is. I am the resurrection 
and the life. And he who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes, he puts that back together. If you believe Jesus in me, he says, and you, you will live, will never die. Now, and then he put this on the end of it. Listen to this, and this always just gets me. He, and I could just see he's looking Martha right in the eye, just like he's looking at us right in the eye. Just like he looked at Peter right in the eye when he denied him the third time. Do you believe this? Do you believe this, Martha? Do you believe this? Powerful, powerful. So let's look at let's look at Martha's test. Let's look at Martha's heart. And I want you to I want to think about you. You know, your story's in the Bible. You, you know, thinking about my testimony and you know, you need to find your, your story in because God's always writing about man and you fall in there somewhere and you you might have multiple stories about your life that you can relate to. Um, so we said a while ago, as we talk about uh, faith being tested, nobody knows until their faith is being tested. Um, and so John opens up in 19 about Martha. Mary and Martha were at the house. And these two women were very, very different. You know what I mean? They, they Remember over in Luke 10 um, when they were preparing a, a meal for Jesus and Martha was in the kitchen working all real hard and sweating and trying to get it all done. And, and Mary was in, was in the other room just listening to Jesus and doing what we should do, listening to the Lord. And, you know, and then she just said, Lord, can't you just get her to help me? I mean, you know, she's, 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 she's just not helping. She's, and uh, Jesus kind of uh, kind of uh, um, got on her, <laughs> rebuked her gently. You know, what was important was the things of God and not, not preparing dinner. So, but these two women were different, and we see the same thing. Martha was a busybody. Martha was one of those that just want to go, 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 do, 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 and, and hurry, in a hurry. And Mary, I like to think of Mary being just kind of laid back, you know, just kind of laid back, taking it all in. I love people like that, that have that. It's amazing how God creates his own people with different personalities. But Martha was on the go before Jesus even got there. She's, she's, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a cloud of dust behind her. I can just see it running out to him. To, to, to and, and she wanted to tell him something. And, and what was in her heart was, was, was not glory. It, it was disappointment. Uh, and and she said, Lord, I, if you'd have been here, he he wouldn't have died. I mean, it's almost like that we see her disappointment. We see almost complaining in a sense. I, I, I be careful what I say here about that because I but but her heart and uh, um, she almost had a resentment in a sense that that, that she and, and knowing the the whole scripture that Lord, we, we sent people to go get you. You know, and we did our part, but you, but you didn't come. You know, and I, you know, we, I think we can relate to that sometimes. I'm not saying it's right; it certainly is not. But, but it, it, we see a very wavering faith. We see a woman that is speaking some very truth here about the about the resurrection in the last day. It's interesting because she mentioned the last day. She paid attention. A lot of people don't even know what the last day is. Like, what is the last day? Uh, but, but, but she knew. Uh, she knew. So listen to what, what we just said. Nobody knows their, their, the, the strength of their faith or their faith until it's tested, you know. And, and she'd been tested. I mean, this woman was hurting her brother, especially when they knew. Because she said, if you'd have been here, I know he, he wouldn't have died, you know. He, he wouldn't have. Uh, and so she's like lost hope, even in, literally in Jesus, not the hope of losing her brother, but she lost hope in, in her faith in Jesus. And that happens to us. We, 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 get, we get wobbly. Pastor Tim said get wobbly in your faith. Um, and so she's very disappointed. Uh, and, and folks, as we mentioned, we're not talking about a, we're not talking about a, even a really a weak Christian. These were, this, remember what Jesus, what Jesus said? He loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were close. Um, outside, I would say, outside of the the circle of, of uh, uh, James, uh, John, and Peter, the inner circle of Jesus. These probably these three people in this home, because because he was remember he's going to their house a lot in Bethany. It was real close to Jerusalem, and um, and 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 he visited them quite often uh, in the scriptures. They they were close. What I'm trying to say, um, and and still she has a a, a wobbly faith. So we we don't. We're not like condoning it, but we just see how easily you can stumble, even when you got God right in your right before you in your sights. Um, and so Mary was disappointed. Um, let's jump over. We may we may look at this again. 
um, you know, and she was grieving and mourning. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and if we jump over uh, to, uh, let's, just, let's go to, well, I'll tell you what, let's look at Mary real quick. Let's look at 32 uh, through 37. And there again, I, these, these are not on necessarily on my notes, but I, I just, and we may pick this back up again. We mentioned Martha and Mary. Well, then listen to Mary's response. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet and said to him, and listen to this, exactly. Listen to me. These two sisters were, were, were different in personalities. But listen to what her response was, and, and it is identical word for word of Martha's. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. There it is again. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. So this is very fascinating, Jesus here. Um, and he said, uh, where have you laid him? And, and they said to him, Lord, come and see. And in, in the, in the shortest verse in the Bible we find in verse 35, and Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him. They, they, they actually see his love and compassion. But listen to this. Not only was Mary and Martha doubting, but, but even those that were there mourning with her, her and probably her friends, their friends and family, and uh, those they went to uh, synagogue with and such, but some of them said, could not this man, speaking of Jesus, who opened the eyes of the blind man, that's interesting, that was probably the man born blind. The, the, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from also dying? It's like they, they didn't have faith either. They saw him crying and, we, and weeping. Question is, why did Jesus weep? We've been talking about death. And it is, and it, it, please, we understand that grieving um, and mourning is very necessary. Probably the best healing. I, I just recall from the loss of uh, at least my daddy, the, the, you know, I, uh, that uh, I had to just had a good cry. And it was like a day later. And I just went out by myself. And I just let it out. I, and I, that was the best relief I, that, I, that I had, you know. Um, so it, it's, it's built into us that, that that's necessary. But why did Jesus grieve? Because he knew he was going to raise Lazarus. Not only did he know it, he told us. He said this death is, is not, this sickness is not in becoming of death. And, and, uh, and he's coming to, to, to raise him back up. He, he said that and he knew that. So why, why was he grieving? Well, I think we've already mentioned this. Um, he was grieving because it was never meant to be this way for us. We, we did it. It was self-inflicted sin. You know, when we couldn't, when Adam and Eve couldn't keep one commandment. We were talking about today, we, we have the, the God's word, and it's, and it's, but God made it really, 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 really simple in the garden. And he could not keep one of the most intelligent people ever. You remember, they, they were not, didn't have any sin, Adam and Eve. If you think about Adam and Eve, like, well, he was just this crude human being that didn't know anything. He named every animal on the planet. Don't, don't tell me he didn't know what he was doing. He was he was nearly divine. I'm telling you, he had no sin. Uh, uh, he, he was very, 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 very probably you could, we might say the most intelligent uh, human being on the, ever been. Uh, and, and he couldn't keep one commandment. You understand? He fell. That being said, it was never supposed to be. Jesus was crying because it never was supposed to be that, he, that when he saw the grieving, and 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 this was his friend, and he saw the sorrow in these two sisters that. That he 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 wept for a fallen world and entangled in a sin caused death. That's why we, there was death for sin. There will always be death. There was no living eternally, and that's why he cried. That's why he wept. Um, and so it, it's interesting, and and it sort of just in a sense all boils down uh, to the time of death for every human being. It really does, um, and that it, and death puts uh, it puts all of our fate to the ultimate test. Uh, I mean, really, it really does. And uh, um, I think about Abraham just a minute, and uh, and and this might be the greatest test in the Bible, uh, um, and it might be the greatest leap of faith or act of faith when Abraham took out Isaac. Uh, that we know the, the history of that forever for for God to do that testing, testing, testing. And when Abraham went out there, and and it never says Abraham ever said, Lord, are you sure? And it was like, when he told him to do it, he got up the next morning. When he told him, he was doing it. And even to the point of raising the, you know, he raised up the knife and the angel said, stop. Well, he was fixing to, 
in the you know what reason I'm so glad that, that God put in his word in Hebrews 11 19 how, how could he do that I mean how could he do that well, let me just read that verse to you it was talking about Abraham's faith and it was credited him with righteousness by the way that he considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead and folks let me tell you something about that time there was really no resurrection talk of resurrection uh as far as scripture goes, I'm not saying God did, might not have said something, but there was not a lot of talk about resurrection. In fact, there's not a lot of talk of resurrection except from the apostles uh, through through most anybody in, in the scriptures and even into the New Testament, except for for, for you know for for uh, the like I say the apostles that wrote the word. You don't see any stories where where people were talking about being resurrected. They, they just didn't think much about that. Okay, um, and and back certainly in Abraham's day. But listen to me. He believed that. Uh, he believed that. It's, it's an incredible uh, passage of Scripture to explain that, that test that he passed. I want to move in as we close here in the next 15 minutes uh, about death on, you know, thinking about my testimony and just thinking about, you know, testimonies are wonderful. They really are, aren't they? Uh, everybody needs a testimony. Um, it's my thoughts on death and, 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 and kind of look at it in, in, in my life. Uh, and everybody is affected by it, just like Martha and Mary. And, and we don't like it. I, I promise you, we don't like it and, and the tragedies that come. And, and, uh, but I, I want to talk about uh, three deaths that, that I witnessed uh, within my uh, own family and then, and then one outside of my family, really in the family, in the family of God um, uh, that, that we experience. And I just... Uh, uh, it's just good. the Holy Spirit just led me, and I just uh, not really based on any scripture, but maybe every bit of the scripture we've already talked about. But many of you know that in 1989, <clears throat> my brother and I were engaged uh, uh, to our beautiful wives, uh, and we were to be married. I think about six weeks apart, and, and my brother James uh, was going to be married. Uh, and, and it's like funny how we sat down and like I, I want to get married this summer. Well, I want to get married this summer, and <laughs> it, it worked out. It, it was never an argument, but. But anyway, as it worked out, it was uh, that he was going to be married first, uh, and it was uh, it was in May, and uh, and I was going to get married in June. And Cindy and I, and so we, it was all worked out. But anyway, you know that this tragic story of my brother that was married uh, on a Saturday afternoon, and um, uh, they're going to celebrate, enjoy their their honeymoon down in Panama City at the beach, the beautiful white sands there on the Gulf, and. Uh, Married uh, about four in the afternoon, three or four in the afternoon. Don't remember exactly the time. And anyway, that sitting at a red light that was about a mile from their hotel room that night. Uh, might have been, could have been Saturday morning. I think it was after twelve. Was uh, sitting at a red light and they were r rear-ended in a in a uh, uh, a wreck. And, and my brother lost his life. Um, they were even never even consummated his marriage. Um, and at that time, I was uh, not walking with God. I, I was soundly saved, and I, I'll tell you, tell you this um, in my testimony um, next weekend, but uh, um, I was not walking close to God. And death, that death kind of shook me in a sense, and I just remember a lot, a lot, of, a lot of thoughts. Uh, um, I didn't have very, very, very little peace. Keep in mind what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you. I wasn't walking with the Lord. Um, it wasn't wasn't fear. It was it was kind of a, a a confused heart in a sense. God, you know why? Um, and that, we're gonna all go through that for a while. You know, one thing I'm trying to learn in God's teaching is is um, you know don't don't blame God for anything. If there's anything contrary, it's it's, it's me. Okay, um, and and but He knows what He's doing, and He does it for a purpose. And I just remember I was living so wickedly. I remember God just crying out to God, and, and I had really had no prayer life, zero. Uh, I had a God is great, God is good prayer life. Uh, Y'all might know what that means. I've used that before. Um, but um, God, why didn't you just take me? And I mean, I, I really remember saying that seriously. I, I would have rather, I would have rather, I, I'm the one that deserved to die. He didn't. He was a much better man than I was. And uh, But God took him. And uh you know, and it's funny now, I, uh, even now, I, I ask why, 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 over and over, months and months and months and months, and even years possibly. Uh, and, and now when I got back walking with God and began to get right uh, with him, here I'm using it. You say, God, you ask God why? He said, well, here it is, because it's going to be for my glory. One day you're going you're gonna to speak about it. And, uh, and though he's been dead, you know, 35 
plus years or he, uh, you know, here's glory, okay? And so that was a view of death when I was not walking with the Lord. Now, let's, I want to move to, and I've lost both my parents within less than four years apart, my dad. And it was another tragedy. It was another tragedy that, that, that you know, and there were some people there that, uh, some of my kin folk that went over and used to check on my dad. Not, not that he needed it, but just go see him and all. And, man, they were so burdened. and said, if I had to come over here, kind of like Martha, you know, Lord, if you'd have been here, and they blamed themselves. You know, if I'd have just done what I normally do, and I, I probably would have could have found him and helped him. And but uh, tragically, he lost his life in, in, in an accident right beside. He died in the he died in the garden, uh, um, in his own garden. And y'all know that story. And and then my mother's passing uh, less than a year ago, back in April, end of April last year. But I want to tell you how I viewed death then. Uh, I was way closer to the Lord. I mean, I, I really, God had given me a chance to come back and, and, uh, and I'm, uh, you know, where I'm at now and my walk is, is just leaps and bounds upon where I was. I really had no walk, I'll be honest with you, when my brother died. And, uh, um, but the peace I had, I, you know, Miss Faye was, uh, 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 Miss uh, Virginia, Barry, Miss Virginia, um, uh, this past week, a few days ago, and, First thing that came out of Faye's mind is peace. You know, we had peace in the family, and uh, and I just remember, especially my mom, the way my mom died, and uh, that there was very little mourning, very very almost weird. I can say that in the right way. Um, yeah, we wept when we saw her, and realized that she was gone, but there was such a peace. That was that peace that you can't explain. And, and remember the hope we just talked about. Jesus is a perpetual hope. That that just went to the forefront of my heart. I hated my daddy died the way he did. My mother went so peacefully that it was just, it was just hard to mourn. And, uh, you know, and I'm going to tell you something. I have been to funerals before, and they've, and they've been at Emmett Grove, folks. I'm going to tell you. But I, I can I can think of two funerals I went to. That was one of the greatest worship services that I personally, it, it was not a funeral. It, it, it was not mourning. It was a celebration. They're talking about, you know, trying to, uh, and, and it is. It's not a funeral. It's a celebration of life. And I say amen. Uh, and, and and so how you view death, you know, if it's the hope of Jesus, it's it, it is. Um, I want to share another one, and, and and maybe I maybe I should have maybe I should have gotten permission. I don't know, but glory. We're talking about this is for God's glory, but but I, I want to talk about a, a dear another very 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 tragic, much like my brother's uh, loss of life was was Matthew Ward, you know, and um, I, I remember exactly where I was. Um, I think it was 2016. I'm not positive, but but um, it was you know the Hurricane Matthew, and we were out in the yard right out here. I mean, right to my left, 15, 20 yards, picking up limbs and pine cones when we got the word what happened to Matthew. And uh, you know, and I talked to Paul that morning. I love I love Paul and Lynn Ward. I mean, they are. I, that is a, a love that that like almost like Jesus had for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. I, I just love that man, and I love his wife. And and all of the things that happened in 89 when I was not walking with the Lord came back. I said, here's the same kind of tragedy. And I began to think about what my mama, you know, watching your parents suffer over the loss of a child, it's something that you don't wish on any, any parent ever. And uh, I remember saying something to Paul like this when I called him, and I didn't know what to say. You never know what to say, do you? I mean, think about it. It, it is Sometimes you just don't have words. And God told me to say this. It said to tell Paul, and I said it, told him. I said, Paul, it's all about hope. It's all about Jesus and the resurrection life. I said, I said, where, where Matthew is right now, it ain't a better place to be. And it, it was so real and so surreal, both of us, that uh, he doesn't have to worry about, he's not struggling in his flesh anymore. Um, you know, we, we like to think of sicknesses like when people have cancers and and I love to pray for mercy and, and that are hurting, that are suffering. And this man just went with with zero suffering, an instant. Uh, I said, he's not struggling with his flesh. I kept thinking that over and over. He is not struggling with his flesh anymore. And and, and Matthew had, just like me, had was, was walking, got off track, you know, raised right and then got off track. And then, then he came back and it was a God's glory story was going on and on and on. And, you know, and, 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 and when, when he got back right, uh, Matthew did. God just took him on, took him on home. You know, he didn't have to battle. 
uh, the battle of the flesh that we do. And there was such peace in that and saying that. But, you know, uh, I just, uh, I, I think about it. I think about Matthew's gain, you know, and that hope. And just like my mother and my father, even my brother, I do believe they're all, I know, uh, are, are with the Lord right now. But but also in, 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 in those times, uh, and I'm just sharing my heart here, and I, I know this is glory to God, that, that watching Paul over the last few months, again, I told you about my parents, and, and just watching, my daddy just did not recover much. Um, I, I think he, his, what little bit of recovery my daddy had in the loss of my, my because that was, that was his, that was his farming partner, okay? He raised him from a little boy. My, my brother James loved it. Daddy saw him every day, every morning. He got up, and that's who, who he saw first thing in the morning was, was James, his son. And, and so I was just thinking of, of, of Paul and praying about that um, when I knew what that was ahead and what was ahead um, and, to, and to see Paul uh, and uh, and to see the hurt um, in, in his heart for his loss and uh, and over time to sit in prayer even even recently in the last year or so for a father with such a loss with such a such a loss, and I mean, we can just relate this to, to God the Father and Jesus, um, that would actually pray for forgiveness. That Paul would pray for forgiveness um, because of his selfishness of wanting his son back. Man, thank you, good gosh. That's a hard prayer to pray. Pray, I'm telling you, that he would see his even mentioned the word stinginess of wanting his son back. And if you think about that. We don't want that per we don't want a, 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 someone in God's presence to ever come back. Now if we would go talk to them. <laughs> come on back. Please come on back to earth. <laughs> no way. I'm not leaving here. You know? When we see him, faith ends. What this test of faith and the things we go through every day, the series of our lives, when we see him, it is over. My 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 daughter, Lord willing, and, and that precious grandbaby are coming into town in just a few hours. And my hope is that I'll go down to that airport and we pick them up. And uh, that, that's my hope. But when I get down there and I see them coming down the stairs or whatever, and I see them, my hope is 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 over. My faith that my faith of, of wishing and desiring that I see them is over because they're there. I'm in their presence. That's exactly the way it is with Jesus. And so it, it is wonderful. Uh, resurrection. It is, it is absolutely wonderful in eternal life. The life that Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. And so I ask you as we close today, how how can a man this this distraught pray a prayer and such a such a loss, so monumental in this Linda? How how can they pray that? How can they? Well I want to I want to read you the answer. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. But this is the, this is the question. This, uh, this is the answer to the question, how does a man pray that way? Because Jesus asked, do you believe this? Do you believe what I just told you? Do you believe that, that, I'm, that I am the Son of God, that I am? And what I say is, and when I say, when God said something, it's got to happen. Do you believe this? That's why Paul Ward can pray that prayer, because he does. Okay, that's it. I, that's just a result. We don't preach another lesson or teach another lesson. That's that's enough. You know, that, that's enough. Um, we're going to look next week at the resurrection. All about. There's so much about the resurrection. It is our hope, and uh, and, and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna delve into that. Uh, Maybe go back over some of the same verses, but but uh, remember, there has to be a death to be, have a resurrection. And, and if we think of Jesus, we think of anybody else to be resurrected. There must be a must be a death. And so um, we we will we will look at the we will look at the, the good part if there is. This this was good today. I'm just going to tell you this is if it's true, it's good, and and God's word is true. And so um, we uh, we we look forward to that day uh, when when faith ends, test end, and we're in His presence. What he just told us, okay? And so uh, we'll close with a prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you. And I just thank you for your spirit leading this morning. And um, so it's funny how the devil sometimes can get in uh, the teacher's minds and say, this is just this is just not much to this. 
uh, what you're writing. But God, when your spirit speaks, uh, uh, even the words on the paper that a man writes, uh, they come to life. And uh, you, you have spoken. You've spoken to me. If nobody gets anything out of this, you've spoken to me, God, and I'll praise your name. You have been glorified, Lord. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. Uh, you did it through me. I, I didn't do anything, uh, but you did it, Lord. Uh, you glorified yourself, and we give you praise and the hope and the resurrection. We look forward to next week for what you're going to say uh, about life uh, in the resurrection, God, and there is no fear. Uh, there is no love. Uh, uh, perfect love cast out that fear, um, and so you died for us. You loved us, and you died. Uh, and you hold the, the power and the authority to lay it down and take it back up. And you and you do the same for us. And the last day you'll raise us up. We thank you for that, Lord. And we say these things and ask these things and give praise in Jesus' name. Amen.